Hey guys, it's Charlene. Today I'm going to share with you how to make this really cute shaker card using some of the new products from the release. Here I have the officially stamps and dies, and these are really fun because they are layering stamps. You have a solid fish layer, and then you also have a stamp that stamps the outline as well as all the details of the fish. This makes it so that you can stamp lots of fun colors onto the base of your fish. So you can see I'm sort of angling my stamp pads here, and that gives you a different look. You can dab it, you can put it at an angle, you can swirl it around, or you can do a full coverage goldfish. So I wanted all of my fish to look a little bit different, so I'm using different shades of orange, stamping in different ways, and sometimes I am stamping more than once in order to create a second layer of the color. I really like how this looks. I was trying to mimic some actual goldfish that I found when I did an image search. So this went back and forth. I kind of used the corner here of my ink pad on this fish and I think it turned out really cool and I did two different shades of orange using that technique and you can see when I stamp down I get this fun pattern on my fish. So now that I have all of those done, I just line up the top layer stamp on top of all of the fish, and then I can come in with black or gray. In this case, I wanted to use a dark gray ink because I wanted it to look like the fish were underwater, and that'll make more sense as we go along here. But once I get a nice good coating of that dark gray, I'm gonna come in and stamp right over the fish and add all of those fun details as well as the outline. And I just think it looks really cool. I like having this style of stamp because it gives you a lot of options. So there's those cute fish. I'm gonna use the coordinating dies and cut those out. Off camera, I did also cut out two in white cardstock of each of the fish. That way I can layer them up. So you can see I'm just gluing all of them together. So that way there's a little bit of dimension to the fish because these guys are gonna look like they are in a fish bowl. So I want them to kind of pop up on the inside of the shaker. Once I have that done, I can go ahead and come in with this gorgeous background stamp and it's actually called the scene building sand background stamp but when i saw it the first thing i thought of was bubbles in a fish tank so it's really versatile you can use this for underwater scenes you could use it to stamp out sand really fun and we're going to do this bubble look i was talking about by using the emboss resist technique so I have some clear embossing ink and I'm just going over really carefully to make sure I get all of those spots. I did put down some anti-static powder tool before I stamped and now I'm coming in with clear embossing powder and I'm just gonna make sure to get all of the little spots on this large background stamp because I wanna be able to have my pick of where I want to cut from. So now I've got my heat gun in there and I'm just melting all of the embossing powder. I'm turning my cardstock in the light as I go because it can be kind of hard to see what's melted and what's not. So turning it in the light helps me see that. And I'm just careful to flip around and make sure I get all of that melted. Now onto the ink blending, which is the fun part because you get to experience the magic of that emboss resist. This is such a fun technique. So I'm using three different colors of ink. I've got two shades of teal as well as one shade of blue. And I'm doing the darker teal there on that bottom right hand corner. I did my first coat. And then in the middle here, I'm doing the blue. And then the top left hand corner, I'm doing a lighter shade of teal. So once I get a nice base coat down on there, what I like to do is go back over everything one more time so I can make sure it is all blended together very well. Now, as that dries, it it will even out and you'll lose those splotches. But I'm just taking a microfiber cloth here to make sure to wipe away any of the excess ink. So you can see now all of those little dots that make it look like bubbles. Next, I'm gonna be using the misshapen stitch circle dies. These are really fun. And I'm picking the spot there, cutting it out of the inked panel as well as a white panel. Now I'm just deciding where I want this to go on my card. And I'm using that outer white piece that I cut out 
and I'm using the inset ink blended piece. So now I can take that out because I've taped down that outer piece. I know exactly how this is going to fit back in there. And then I'm just putting some liquid adhesive on the back of the inked piece so I can pop that in there exactly how I planned. So you can see there, I kind of ended up flipping it the other way from how I actually inked it because I liked it better this way. So once I get that down, I can come in and stamp my sentiment, which is really cute. It says you're now officially one year older, which is fun. And that comes from that same officially stamp set. Now I can glue down my fish and they look so cute in there. And I was really prompted by that background stamp to make this card. I thought, oh my gosh, I can make something that looks like a fishbowl or an aquarium. And I think the misshapen circle die really brings that feeling to this card. So I'm just gluing these fish all down in there so that they look happy and well spaced out in their little home. And then I'm gonna add some sequins. So just make sure you get your fish to kind of cover all of the different areas. You don't want to have any dead space on the inside of your little fish bowl here and now you can really see how all of those different colored fish look together i think they look so neat so now i'm removing that outer circle because this is what i'm going to use in order to make my shaker so i've put some double-sided tape all the way around the back side of that circle and now I'm covering it with some acetate and I'm just going to take my scissors and trim off that excess acetate from around the edges here. Once I have that done I can go ahead and add some strips of foam tape all the way around the back as well. You just want to make sure that the foam tape butts up next to each other so there aren't any little gaps or holes where your sequins can come out. Now I'm gluing some of the new coral reef sequins onto the background here in my little fish bowl. And I like to do this for a couple of reasons. One, because it's a shaker card. If it's standing up, then all of those sequins go to the bottom of your card. But if you have a couple glued here and there on the inside of your shaker, you're still going to have them on there even when the card is stood up. Also, they kind of catch the other sequins and some stick to each other and stuff like that. And it just makes for a fun look. So once I have the amount of sequins in there that I want for my shaker, I just pop down the top on there and that finishes off my whole card. You can see here, doesn't that look so cute with those sequins in there and they just shake all over the place. Lots of fun. All right, guys, be sure to like and subscribe as well as hit that notification bell so you can get notified of future videos. Have a great day.